Hey gang, um, I'm just watching crude oil here. There could be a long at 05. I just wanted to pass it along for those of you to trade. Got a target of 17 up here. First target anyway. I'm taking the confirmation candle just so we can get a um, little push away from this uh, level. A uh, long entry uh, crude oil, 51.07. Uh, it's been screaming long since uh, five o'clock this morning. I just wanted to point it out for the for those of you that are here uh, in case you want to put a trade on early. And if we get a pullback here, um, look to take a long entry down in this 94, hold 94. Also, gold um, is reversing here too. We're long, long crude. First target up here at seventeen.
room usually opens at 6 15 but I, I saw these these are a bunch of trades setting up early so i thought i'd jump in and just give the people that are here a heads up i'm going to move this target down to 15 there's just some uh, block orders at 17. and if we blow through them then we'll have a runner in place Hey, good morning. I'm going to um, just kind of jump right in here. Um, I passed on an, a trade about, well, I don't even know, five, ten minutes ago. Um, I just saw a crude trade setting up. So some people are in it, some people aren't. Um, there's a bunch of volume sitting here above us. So I, you know, I'm tempted to, gold, gold, uh, or uh, oil broke out of a daily pattern yesterday kind of turn the corner and push to the upside. So we're looking for longs, but um, there are some big block orders above us and it could blow right through them, but it could also shut it down for a little bit, pull back to um, you know 51 to test, so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my target down here to 12 and then I'm going to leave my runner just to play it safe and then we can reassess. There's going to be a bunch of trades today from what it looks like. Things are moving pretty good. But I still have my stop at 97.
So um, just to, I kind of jumped in here fast and furious, so I'm feeling a little unorganized, but um, we're looking for longs and crude oil on a daily chart. We kind of broke out of uh, a downtrend and a small, um, you know, a move to the upside. So we're looking for longs and crude oil. And we had one here at this level, um, the 51 level. So we're looking for longs, um, gold. We're looking for longs too. It looks like it's trying to turn the corner. There's a little down move overnight. But I think it's, um, from what I see, it looks like it's pushing up. It's trying to reverse here. And if it doesn't, um, we'll be taking shorts down here. But I'm not mean taking any longs until we get above the 60.7 60, 60 level. So on um, on oil, there's a bunch of volume that's stacking below us to push up. So it's got us it's got us boxed in here. Um, my first target is usually if you want to just follow my my target with one contract, unless you want to hold hold for bigger targets, and that's another conversation we can have, but. Just follow my first target. Sometimes it's eight ticks, sometimes it's ten ticks. So we have um, a pullback here, and we should hold at these levels. We've got a um, overnight midpoint level that should hold, and then we have the top of um, this high volume box that should hold. So um, the next double tail would be a you know pretty decent entry. Gold looks like it wants to put. Fifty one eleven for crude though, for re entry. Uh, 5111 for crude.
So looking for a close above uh, 05, that should um, propel us to the next, up to the 15s for sure. So entry now would be 09. Entry at 09. That'll be the close of this double tail that's forming long. Remember today we have some news at 8 o'clock and we have FOMC um, all throughout the day. So there's a bunch of little landmines. Land mines. So we're going to take a couple quick trades and um, be cautious again today. Yesterday after we left, there wasn't much action. I think there was a late move in gold, but um, other than that, there was nothing. Yeah, Kurt. You can use either Kurt. O nine entry. This bar should close here shortly. It could cart it could Kurt. Okay, gold broke range here. So let's look for a pullback.
this number recalculated to 61. I'm not looking to trade this short up here just because gold is uh, trying to turn the corner long. Got two minutes to the bottom of the hour. So also in NQ, if you guys are wanting to trade NQ, there's some longs um, pushing up into the 21 range. It's, it's trading kind of slow, but just to, just to point out for some of you NQ guys. So we'll watch the 61 level up here and see what it, how it reacts to it. All right, we're pushing our 61 level in gold, so let's look for a push above it. I went to it and tapped it.
ultimately target one and crude is 17, but I pulled mine back just because of um, some potential volume up here, but it looks like we're chewing through it. So I'm gonna move this back up to 17. Our gold pushed above our 61. All right, all we need in gold now is a pullback. Uh, crude is kind of slow going here. There's some orders above us that we're kind of chopping through. But there's definitely buyers there. If we can get a pullback in gold, um, we should be in good shape. Okay, so our entry would be 61.9 in gold. 61.9 in gold. And if um, this crude doesn't get going here pretty soon, I'm gonna take my money and run. Entry would be 07. No, I didn't add just because I'm limited contracts with top step. All right, so I'm gonna take gold off and just see what, for the time being what, what's gonna happen here. So we've got the FOMC um, at seven speaking. And then we have a small uh, flash manufacturing, um, some services stuff, and then eight o'clock we have new home sales. So 
So 613 in gold. All right, here's our oil pushing. So I'm gonna move down to um, 15, even 14. There's a big 300 block at 15. It might pull its order though. Cause it's getting smaller and there hasn't been much, there hasn't been any volume up there. So entry in gold and at, at 61.3. And then at 20, there's another 300. Look for a push up into this 15 number. Then it might pause there for a second. I move my stop to uh, 01. We just have to be patient with crude oil. It wants to go long just because on a daily chart, it's, it's, it's broke out. So there's a lot of buyers chipping away. But right now there's a block of sellers that we're grinding through right in this area here. And when it breaks that, it's going to push to 20. We still have a long entry in gold at 63, pushing up here. Target filled. There's our target stop. I'm leaving at 01 for now. Actually, I'm going to bring it up. Um, and if we break out, I'm going to let it sit here at break even for a little bit. So now we're um, pushed up against this order at 15 that, we, that I've been talking about, this 300. And there's no icebergs or anything. It, it kind of is what it is. It's just a big chunk there and there's a bunch of volume all the way up to 20 so this might be a headwind but it might cut through it too and get some momentum so that's why i'm keeping my runner um, fairly tight here instead of taking it off completely
Just drawing some structure here in gold. We did get our push to 20. And it cleared out. Um, it cleared out a bunch of sellers. So we should push long here if we can hold this. If we can hold this um, 51.8, we should push up into here. Target at 34 up here. So first target in gold would be, if we fail here, it would be up in this 62, 9, 63 area. Order filled. All right, we're in gold. Stop at 60.3. Target 62.3. Uh, stop on oil is 08. Sixty-two-three up here. There's a big order. Um, well, big for gold is like sixty contracts. So compared to the what's going, what else is going on this morning? Let's see if we can hold this. Looking for a push in gold. 62.3 target. You know, it looks pretty clean all the way up there. For those of you that are um, running one contract or want to just take your all in and all out, 62 or even 50, um, 61.9, this swing high would be a good, good target. Holding on by just a tick or two here in crude. Remember, we have some news at seven. All right, I think it's FOMC. Let me double check. So we've got FOMC landmines all day today. So it makes for frustrating days. Because you never know what you're going to get. All right, we're pushing in gold here. For 62.3, I'm stopped on um, I'm stopped on gold or on oil. Sorry. We're still in gold.
so um, with oil, we'll see where we, um, what level we hold at. We should hold at 05. Gold's pushing, it's trying to. So five should hold. In oil. I'm gonna move my first target down to 62. 62, which is right at that swing high. There's a bunch of orders sitting out here and it might bring in some liquidity and it'll push, but we still have a runner. So even uh, 61.9 could be a target. It's a tick below that swing high, just in case it um, doesn't push through it. It should. So it's 51.5 to 51 should hold. If it doesn't, then um, we know that all these orders that we pushed into were big sellers. There's quite a but there was you know a bunch of um, bunch of orders that we ground. We just kind of pushed through and but definitely looking for longs in, in uh, oil. Job, Willie. You're the man. Yes, yeah, so we have that eight o'clock home sales, um, but FOMC just from the past doesn't matter. Um, there's different speakers throughout the day, and they just they make the market flat and weird. I'm just saying you need to be careful. Hans, what's going on with you today? Ninja, what's it doing? So now we're pushing up against this 105 from the bottom. So we'll see if it holds.
So gold is kind of lackluster volume today. So that usually means range, range bound. Um, just from experience. Every time gold gets pushed up here, it gets smacked down. So yeah, lackluster, right? All right, looks like gold's pushing. Let's see this push and see if it fails again. And if it does, I'm going to take this trade off. I'm not going to play this game with gold today. See what we're doing is we're running up into this underside of this stuff from yesterday. And so that's where a lot of volume is sitting up in here, sellers. But gold on a daily bar also broke out, so.
All right, here's the top of the hour. Here's a push in oil. So we need to be long oil. So just to make you guys feel better, my ninja is locked up too. I can't do anything. I've got an order on too, and I know you guys do too. But I'm just going to keep this going. These stops should... Um, should be fine. Gold's trying to push. Looking for target 61.9, which right at that swing high. And we'll keep our runner. I'm getting the spinning blue circle here, so that's not good. There's our pushing gold. Let's get our 61.9 and push out of here and get a runner going. That would be nice. Yeah, you know what? That's funny you say that because I have an update thing here that just popped up. Uh, I'm watching the all the orders above here. I'm looking for a pullback in oil. So here's the stopping point from this morning where the volume was, or is. 
there's 300 contracts sitting here, 400, 500, 600, 600 contracts sitting up here. So that's why I didn't take it. We should be pushing through on, on gold here. All right, my ninja just kind of came back to life. There's just so much volume up here um, in gold. I mean, so much as in like 80 contracts, which is a lot for this morning. You know, it's usually, it's right now, it's anywhere from 20 to 30 per tick. So there's definitely some sellers up here, but the buyers keep tapping it. So it's just, it's, you know. Wouldn't be a bad idea. So what I'm going to do is just pull down here to six sixty one eight, Just see if I can get a fill and hope, you know. Usually when I do that, it pushes up through. <laughs> Job, Terry. Gold really wants to go long, but I'm not sure if there's an, enough oomph to get through this. Every time this pushes up into this 67, 68, it, the order fills and it pops down and then the volume replaces itself. So don't be, don't be afraid to take some profit up in, up in here if you're you know trading one lot just to bank some ticks. I mean, if it breaks through, it's gonna run, but we also could come down and test this 61 again. George, I, I completely get that. <laughs> and I kick myself every single time. So, you know, that's something that we can do or you guys can do is just take everything all in, all out. There hasn't been much follow through and maybe it's because my stop is so tight because I go to break even. And so, you know, when I look at my top step results, my average winner is really low and it's because of that runner because I'm only getting three bucks or whatever for profit just because of commission. Yeah, we just need some buyers to come in. Those buyers or the sellers kind of went away. There's a few up here at the swing high. They're still in crude though. They're liking this 5120 short up here.
target filled. All right, there's our targeting goal that popped up there. Moving my stop to um, to break even to see if we can pop through this. Okay, oil broke that fifty one twenty. All right, so now we can look for uh, clean, clean pullbacks and pushes in, in oil. We cleared out all those sellers. So we're pulling back and testing this 20, and if this holds, this candle should push up, and it, your um, entry could be 25 if you want to take a breakout trade here without a, without a double tail. So that was the 25 entry. I'm going to wait for a pullback, but... Um, We're running into a bunch of sellers all the way up, and so I'm thinking they're setting this up to drop it. But what do I what do I know? That's just my opinion, <laughs> and we don't trade on my opinion. <laughs> so. So level there at 63.2 in, in uh, gold. Well, Jeff, <laughs> let me clarify that. I um, no, I do too. And my opinion's fairly accurate sometimes, but for me to go out and say, "Well, oil's pushing up because there's a bunch of sellers that want to fill their order," and that doesn't even make sense. <clears throat> but but who knows? But yes, um, let me clarify that statement. Um, my opinion on why the volume is where it is, I guess, is a better statement. It was basically a prediction. So when I went back and did a bunch of back tests on our loser days, and tweaked a few things absolutely crushed markets and this is one of the reasons why I is on the runner loosening my stop and scaling out so what I'm going to do is keep this runner here until I start getting levels you know as this pushes up I get I recalculate levels on like this area here as soon as we push out of here I'm going to recalculate um, another level within this chop you can almost look at it as like I don't even know a term but um, those levels is where I hold my stop so if this pushes up into this 63 target I'll get another level in here so these these are where you make your money George and I will be the first one to admit my stop is super tight um, on my runner when it gets to break even. And that's where I think my problem is. So, you know, what you could do is since I'm running two contracts, 
and I'm taking eight to 10 ticks, I could move my stop to minus eight or 10, depending, and just use one contract to cover my stop out. So I'd still have some profit left. I basically give up half of my profit and that, that would um, eliminate this tight stop, but it also reduce, you know, the short little pops that we get, but if we're getting bigger runners, then it'll, it'll all be a wash. I, um, I know a, a really good, well, the, the very first big time female, um, crude oil trader and she, um, is retired now, but she has given me a lot of insight on crude and just the way it moves. Her average, she said on a on an inner day bar, the average pullback in crude is thirty five cents. So when I have, and I'm just referencing gold, pretend this is crude. When I'm referencing um, crude and a thirty cent, you know, thirty five cent pullback, a ten tick stop is like shooting yourself in the foot basically is the reality of that so this entry here i don't know if anybody took that i love these i love these trades the double tail inside of a move and you basically look for a double you look for you know a bar that's going to have a tail right and there's some definition that defines a double tail. You know, dojis can be when you're programming. And I learned this from one of my good friends um, who does some programming for me. Um, when you're writing code, you have to define what a do what a doji is. So here's a doji here. And the body is one tick, right? This doji is two ticks. Why isn't this one a doji? That's two ticks. So when you're writing code and using these overlays, it's hard to define what a doji is. And so that's what, um, You have to get kind of the perfect storm to get a doji and it's yellow. But in reality, why couldn't have we traded this pullback bar or any of these bars with tails on them, really? Um, you know, like this current bar in gold, this is a pullback bar and it pulls back, fails and pushes. Um, or could push, I guess, or in, and I'm hoping it will, but I love pullbacks like this doji over here, right? That's a pullback. We'll look at this one here. This is a pullback one too. So it's all in your code definition of what it is. And so, you know, this body is two ticks that's bodies two ticks so it is what it is right so when i call out like a pullback trade or a tail trade i call them they're very high probability especially in middle of the runs you know this could have been another one and if you take the overlay off and you just use tom bar Right, I'll show you. I have my wick black so you can't see it. That's switch in here. See these tail trades in runs are really sweet. Like this one here that's forming is 
you know, as a big wick. So when you're looking at these, these tails, probably 80, 75 to 80%, and that's just kind of an, a guess, 75 to 80% of them are double tails. So when you look at these turn bars, they have wicks on them, right? Pushes down and pulls back, and you, you know, those are the bars that we're looking for. Uh, I call these, I call, you know, this one, these are turn bars. You know, it basically goes from sellers to buyers. Those are turn bars. These are tail bars, I call them. It's, it's basically the same thing, it's just where it is in the run. This is the reversal. This is a pullback and a continuation. So you can see, also what I've noticed, if you get a bunch of tails in a row, it's, it's, gonna, it's starting to top out. So this 35 level should be interesting to see what it does up here. So this level up here in gold, I don't know if anyone's still in this runner. This six, this 63, there is one, two, there's a 300 block, a 400 block, 196 block, 120 block, all starting at 62.9. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this out <clears throat> take my profit. I'm not even going to fight that fight. And if it drives through it, then so be it. But, you know, I have 100 ticks in my runner, which really isn't that much, but or 100 ticks, $100. I wish it was 100 ticks. Um, and if it pulls back four or five ticks, then, you know, half of it's gone and it's wiped out. And it's, what's the point? So, this level here is like a, like, you know, like a huge wall. So it'll be interesting to see if it piles through it, which it probably will since I stopped, you know, since I closed myself out. But it's a massive volume here, sellers. So Brian's still in. So just so you know, um, this is where a bunch of volume is, like I said. And if you guys are still in, that's that's awesome. We went up and got banged down, and we only cleared out 100 contracts. So we've got 300, 313 at 3.1. So 3.1, 314, we got at 6 point, is there, at 3.2, we've got 412. And then we've got lots of 100 above that. So it'll be, it'll be at the rate we're going as far as the, the amount of buyers going through, it's going to be a while to tap through that. So I'm going to put this um, double tail back on here because it's a nice way to mark. I like double tail a lot because it's a nice way to mark those tails. So when we see a double, when we see a, a double tail forming in the middle of the run, the thing is, is that when it's pulling back, it's not turning yellow. Um, it's, it's still green and then all of a sudden, or so that when the next one forms, I'll show you, you can just tell what's gonna happen. And as it's pushing up, it's turning yellow. So it's forming a long doji basically, which in translation is our tail trade. And those are good, good trades to take, excellent trades to take if you're in the middle of a run. So 
I'll keep pointing those out because those are good entries. So 25 or 15 was the entry and we've pushed up. So well, if they're above, they're sellers and if they're below, they're buyers. I mean, you can pull up a dome. I'll pull up a dome. You can see what gold did. It's starting to pull back a little bit. Same thing with the dome. I think you can go Is it cumulative depth? Show market depth. I thought there was a way to make this a little bit longer. Does anybody know how to do that? Um, anyway. So when you pull up gold, okay, there might be a limit to how much. Um, so 63, one, you know, this is showing the same thing as, um, my volume. So this would be kind of a limited, so you can see that there's 176 and these aren't buyers. You know, these are sellers. I mean, they could be buyers, but um, the way I look at it is the buyers come from the bottom and the sellers come from the top. And you, you can tell, you know, they have it sandwich, they, they can sandwich it in here. So there's sometimes when you'll see 100 here, 100 there, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, all the way up, or any number really, and they kind of have it boxed in. And those are the dams that it just kind of flatlines, chips and chops, like overnight, they'll kind of box it in, um, like before the Asian markets open. So this is an easy way to watch kind of what's out there in front of us. And this doesn't mean the 63 is going to, you know, stop it in its tracks because there's 160 contracts there. It just means that there's liquidity. And someone wants to sell 100, 159. And so these are sellers over here, buyers over here. Yeah, and there's a lot of fake. But you know what? When you're looking at um, book map and all that, I guess so there's a lot, a lot of fake on there too. But you can see them. You know, they're constantly changing. There's, they're, um, they're spoofing. You know, these could be a button. I mean, look at there's 400 and 300. They could be spoofing. But when this pushed up into here, right? When this pushed up into here, they didn't go away. It took out one level of 190. They didn't go away. And so, you know, so this is showing 800 and mine's showing 400. So, but all these other numbers are fairly accurate. I mean, right on actually. So I've got my double tail alarm on, which catches me off guard, makes me jump in my chair every single time it goes off. I'm going to turn it off.
Oh, that's a good point, Carl. Thank you. That makes more sense. Derek, show market depth, dome setting. Oh, Derek. Derek, are you the gotcha? Okay. Sorry. I thought you were talking about a setting. Um, Derek, are you the Texas Derek? Okay, cool. So I'm gonna um hang it up for the day. But uh I had a fun morning with you guys. And so we'll be here uh, again tomorrow. I pop in at six, six o'clock my time, which mountain standard. And like this morning, if there are some trades all setting up, then I'll, um, I'll point them out. But if there aren't, <clears throat> I kind of wait until six fifteen, just so we have everybody show up, um, to get started. So <laughs> I, I, I see, I feel like I'm, Kind of smart when it comes to technology, but that I'm not sure I know how to do that. Hans, so maybe we can have a session someday. Okay, well, thanks everybody, and I'm assuming everybody is making some profit today. There's some good trades. Slow choppy trades, but we um, we're on the right side, that's for sure. Hey, Adam, they're only scary if you're on the wrong side, but if you can um, keep yourself on the right side, then you're in good shape. And um, some of the things that I discovered in the lab over the weekend um, is um, just another way to keep us on the right side. And today that was spot on. So we'll be in good shape. Um, my computer makes weird noises. You hear my computer make noises? Like what kind of noises? Uh, my double tail alert, I added it to another chart, but didn't turn the alarm off. So that was what you heard. Other than that, a ticking sound. Could be my mic. Am I, am I too close? To oh, it could be my mouse clicks. That's annoying. I'm sure you guys can hear me typing too sometimes. Yeah, I'm always clicking that dang mouse. Um, so we need to make a, we need to figure out how to. So I'm gonna click my mouse, you tell me if you can hear it. Hear that? <laughs> okay, all right. So that's the mysterious clicking sound. 
So when you hear it really start to click in, you know that I'm up to something. <laughs> and if you don't hear it clicking and I'm not talking, that means I'm sleeping. So you can see what happened with gold. We ran all into those orders and that's why I took off my, my runner, just because I got the most out of it, I guess. So anyway, I'll catch you. Um, I'll, I'll catch everybody tomorrow, and thanks um, for your time today. I really enjoyed it. Have a good rest of the day, okay? Bye.